Welcome everyone to the Up on the Soapbox podcast. This is episode 18. I'm not, I'm not done being amazed by those numbers. So episode 18, I'm your host, Brett Schaefer. I am uh, one of the partners of the Soapbox. With me today is my partner, Dan Piggott. Dan, what's going on, my friend? Not too much. Ready to roll with our friend Holly here today and uh, feeling pretty good. So let's uh, let's get this puppy well, started. Here. You stole my thunder. I usually do the intro. So oh. now everybody knows Holly's here. <laughs> um, they, wouldn't have, they wouldn't have known that unless you said it. But today we have a great guest with us, as usual. Uh, today joining us is Holly Escobedo. That's a combination of both the ways you told me to pronounce it. So. There you go. <laughs> it works. She is the promotional sales manager for uh, Picnic Time Family of Brands, which definitely leads me to my first question, although maybe we'll roll into that as we go along here. I'd love to learn more about the family of brands. But uh, Holly, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, about the company, et cetera. I think you know the routine by now. Go on. All right. Um, well, thank you guys for having me. I'm very happy to be here. This is really exciting and a little nerve wracking, but fun. Um, so a little bit about myself. Um, I live in Southern California in Ventura County. I actually live about um, less than two miles from our picnic time uh, headquarters main office. So that's convenient. Um, and, uh, we actually just had a little earthquake here the other day, which mm -hmm. was really exciting. I know I was watching some of your, your sh previous shows talking about the, uh, tornado that came close to your place, Dan. And I was like, oh, California weather, what do we have? Sunshine and earthquakes. And we actually <laughs> just had one. So, um, uh, my background is um, actually in education. I haven't been in the promotional industry that long. It's been um, maybe a little less than three years. Mm -hmm. I was in education for about 20 years and um, just kind of was looking for something new and different and wasn't sure what that could be after being in education for so long. And I came across um, an ad for picnic time and um, there was something in the, the job description that said um, they were looking for someone to go out and educate um, people about picnic time. And I was like, oh, well, you know, I've been educating kids for years. How hard could it be to educate adults? Um, so uh, just kind of made that transition. I started as an account manager and um, now I am the promotional sales manager. It all kind of happened really fast. And then it was like one day I blinked my eyes and next thing I knew we were in a pandemic and I was new to the industry and I had no idea what was going to happen. Um, and uh, so it was a, a little nerve wracking, um, but, um, you know, we've done really well the last couple of years. So that's, that's kind of how I fell into the industry. I, I, you either fall into it or you're brought into it by family or friends. And I fell into it. I had no idea um, what any of it was, was about. And I, I've really enjoyed it. It's, you know, very different than what I was doing before. And uh, you just meet so many great people. Um, with great stories and, and everyone in this industry is really open about sharing and, and talking about their experiences and, and helping new people, you know, become a part of this industry and this, this family. So um, it's been really nice. Um, speaking of family, between um, my husband and myself, we have uh, seven children and three grandchildren. Wow. Um, so that can keep us busy at times. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's a little bit about me. Um, as far as picnic time, um, a couple things that we like people to know about us is that we are a retail branded company. You can find our products at um, Macy's, Bed Bath & Beyond, Nordstrom's, um, Target, um, just to name a few. So um, all of our products come with a built to last lifetime guarantee. And I think that is really great in you know, being able to, to give that over in the promo side of the company, because I don't think a lot of suppliers have lifetime guarantees on their products. So, um, you know, a lot of people are looking for sustainability and, and uh, you know, environmentally friendly products and stuff, but the sustainability, we really try to, you know, make sure people understand and know about our built to last lifetime guarantee, because that's, that's sustainability. That's your longevity in your, you know, you put a logo on something and that product is going to last for years and years. So, um, 
uh, we definitely like to make sure people know about that. And we've been really fortunate. Um, our, we have an amazing um, um, warehouse team. And so we've been really lucky that our lead times are still three to five business days right now. A lot of distributors, when I tell them, they're like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. You know, everyone else is like three weeks at this point. Um, so as long as we have the product in stock, we, we proof within 48 hours, we get everything out the door in three to five business days. So we're very fortunate um, to have an amazing warehouse team that allows that to happen um, and production team in the back for us. Um, we, you know, in, when the pandemic started, obviously everything shut down, everyone was in the same boat, things were really slow, things were uncertain. And then, um, it was like out of nowhere, probably May, June, um, our company just blew up. Everybody wanted to get picnic baskets. Everybody wanted to, how can we social distance, but still get outside, you know? and be with our families. And so we just saw sales start going through the roof. Everybody wanted picnic baskets and chairs and blankets. And um, so in, in, on the promotional side, our sales started to go up in July and they have continued to go up this entire time. We are breaking monthly sales records um, dating back years at this point. We're on target. Um, to have the most successful year in the promotional department that we've that, that we've wow. ever had. So, Fantastic. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's been really, really exciting. Um, and um, you know, we're we're just really thankful. You know, like I said, when the pandemic hit, we didn't know what was going to happen. I had been traveling, you know, for the year prior and going all over the country and meeting people. And, and um, so when it hit, we were like, what are we going to do? How is this going to work in promo? And then, you know, met up with both of you. And I was like, yes, we want in on this. You know, we, we still want to get out there and be in front of the distributors. Um, you know, I, I still meet, um, it's important for us to get out in front of the distributors as much as we can, because I still meet people all the time that they're like, oh, we love picnic time, but I don't really have any customers that, um, you know, be looking for picnic baskets. And I'm like, oh, but we have so much more. <laughs> um, we are not just picnic baskets. And so I think, you know, a lot of people are surprised and they're like, oh, I had no idea. And I'm like, yeah, let me educate you on picnic time. So we are picnic time. We used to be picnic time. Now we're actually picnic time family of brands. And we have four brand lines. We have hundreds and hundreds of products. Um, of course, we have our picnic time, uh, picnic baskets, but then we also have our Oneva line, which is everything outdoors. You got chairs, wagons, coolers, barbecue, um, anything you can think of for out, outdoor. Um, and then we have our uh, uh, Toscana line, which is everything indoor. That's all of our indoor serveware. We got beautiful cheese boards, artisan planks, Lazy Susans. Um, I love to gift people out of the Toscana line. My mom probably has tons and tons of products from the Toscana line. Um, and then we have our legacy line, which is all of our beer, wine, and spirits. And Brett, I think I saw on one of your shows that you were talking about being the craft brewer industry and everything. Um, so that line for us has, uh, is our fastest growing line because of the craft brewer industry just being so big over the last few years. So we're constantly uh, coming out with, with new items. We actually come out with new products twice a year. It's usually in Q1, Q3. Um, it's, been, it's been off since 2020. Um, this year, we're actually launching a fifth brand line. It's called Beach State. Um, it's not going to be available on the promo side, um, but I'm hoping it will be, you know, once it, it gets going and we see how it, how it all, you know, works out. Um, but we do come out with new products twice a year. We have an amazing product development team that works really hard all year long to come up with new, um, unique and innovative products for our customers. We try to stay on trend and, and be, you know, even in the forefront of that and be trendsetters ourselves with our products. So there's always something new to find at picnic time. We are not just picnic baskets and we're always changing and growing and, um, it's a it's uh, been a great experience for me, and I really enjoy 
um, you know, being able to talk to people about, you know, everything that, that we have to offer. Well, that, that covers a lot of ground there. Yeah, I got a laundry yeah. list of things to discuss. Uh, yeah, further, the, first, but, yeah. the first thing I wanted to ask way back when was, what were you teaching or what was your role in, uh, in education? Were you a teacher or? Yeah, so I taught, um, when my kids were young, I was a substitute teacher and it was K through 12 um, for many years. And then um, I was a pre-K teacher oh. and I was a pre-K teacher for a long time, a very long time. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, teachers don't get paid a lot and, um, you know, it's taxing <laughs> after yeah. many years. Yeah. And so, yeah, I was just kind of looking for something new and challenging and, and I, I couldn't really figure out once you've been in education for so long, you know, how do you transition out of that? Where are you going to go with that and, and make a, a second career? And um, yeah, I fell into promo and got, got very lucky. Lo and behold, you end up in the promotional products industry. Yeah. What, so these, these brands that you do carry, are, are they uh, self-created? Did you guys come up with these brands or are they existing mm -hmm. brands that you pull together for our industry? They are our brands. Yeah, they are self-created, again, with our amazing um, product development team, um, our creative department. Um, yeah, we've, we came up with these brand lines with the, um, you know, the logos for each of them. They're all our own. And um, Picnic Time is so great about how we come up with new products. You know, we are, um, we get new product ideas from from all the employees at picnic time, we are encouraged to come up with new ideas, um, bring them to the product development team. Um, even on the promo side, um, when I was traveling, we would, you know, go to shows and people would say, oh, this is a great item, but what if, you know, I really wish it had this, or I really wish it, you yeah. know, they were tweaking things. And I would just go back to the product development team and be like, Hey, you know, here's, a, here's an idea. This is what people are looking for. And um, so, yeah, we just kind of all build off of each other. And, and, it, and it sounds, it sounds like it's a different type of setup. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but most retailers that I've seen in our, in, in the industry over the years that come into the industry first as a, as a strong retail brand and come in, um, they don't sort of get it most of the time um, with, cause it works so differently than the retail market market, you know, how, mm -hmm. how you go to market here. It sounds here though, as if it's a controlled situation where, in other words, I'll give you one example where, you know, if a, if a retailer comes in, um, the stock may not always be there or, or the styles turn over every single year. And, and in promo products, we need consistency of style from year to year for these corporate programs right. that are running. So uh, talk to us a little bit about, about that relationship with, you know, the retail and your promo divisions and how they make work together and even complement each other. Um, yeah, we, um, you know, when we come out with our new products, um, a, a lot of times we're taking existing products and we're tweaking them, we're adding new colors um, and, and uh, you know, we have like our promenade picnic basket has a service of two. And then we came out with the Coronado that's just the basket without the service inside. Um, and, you know, I think the product development team just really kind of gets out there into, you know, the retail market and sees what's happening and what's, what's trending and what's going on. Um, and, um, you know, we retire um, items, but they're usually items that, you know, have have run the gamut and have been here for a long time and they're they're just not popular anymore they're not on trend so we kind of phase those out and then um bring in you know new and exciting things and then we we have our standard you know base items that people know us for you know we're have uh very popular with our chairs our blankets and and our picnic timelines so those are our our staples um you know yeah. that we keep around all the time well i'm gonna i'll put my order in shortly because because the stuff looks beautiful. You should. Yeah. You should. Get your holiday order in now, Dan. Sure, you ain't kidding. <laughs> no, I, I had a couple of things to add. So first of all, you carry yourself like a really well-seasoned veteran in this business. I don't, I don't know if that's a compliment or not. It's simply an <laughs> observation. So, uh, but also what I, the other thing I wanted to say, and Dan, maybe you can back me up on this. It seems like most of our guests 
um the way they got into this industry was they kind of found it and stumbled upon it they i was gonna i was gonna suggest that it's about half half or maybe even more so i think it's more tell, so, tell yeah. a similar story like i didn't know this industry existed yeah. and here yeah. i am yeah and, and cool. I had to explain it to my family, you know, when I got the job, they were like, but what are you doing? Yep. <laughs> and so I, I always uh, use the scenario. I was like, you know, like when you go to a Dodger game and you get a, a free hat, when you walk in, you're at, you're at hat day or cooler day or whatever. And you look and it'll say sponsored by and have somebody's name. I'm like, that's a promotional product that's what I'm selling. You know, that's what I'm doing. And they're like, Oh, okay. So. Yeah, and then, and then you, if you look back in the conversation, their eyes glossed over probably about one second into your explanation. Right, right. This is Good our, this, you, Holly. this is our you. burden. Yeah. This is our burden. We got to live with this. So, all right. So let's uh, move on to our soapbox moments. And uh, this time mm-hmm. I have the honor of going first. So I will go ahead with my soapbox moment. And, you know, Dan and I, well, I, I, I've taken exception to a few of Dan's uh, soapbox moments in the past, and we've been having conversations and I'm starting (laughs) to see it his way. Um, Not, you know, say Dan doesn't necessarily use it as an opinion. Sometimes he uses it as a recommendation. I didn't really see it that way, but today I'm going to use my soapbox moment in a non-traditional for me way. And I'm going to thank the rest of the world for finally catching up to us germaphobes. It has been a real pleasure seeing everybody come up to speed carry their sanitizer, not touch door handles, things I've been doing for the most, most, most of my life. Now it's become mainstream. And I just wanted to thank the world for joining me in my quest to remain germ free. It's about time. I'm glad you're here. That's a silver lining for me over the, over the course of the past 20 months. Keep your germs to yourself. That's all I have to say. So thank you all. Dan? No, no, no working on your own phobias. It's just, you're just glad everyone's at the party. I, the, okay. If this is what it took to get here, no, I'm not going to say I'm glad, but welcome to the club. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair, okay, very good. I'm glad and you feel. Co- I'm glad you're feeling good about that. I'm just happy we're on Zoom right now. That's all. Okay. <laughs> well, my my soapbox moment is actually going to. I'm going to stay within the promo industry for I maybe the first time uh, on this, uh, but I am here to make a declaration today, and it is we have we have gotten there. We are there. It is time to stop with printed catalogs. Mm. This conversation has been going on now for 10 years, strongly for five years. Um, It's time, you know, and people say, and the first thing you hear is my customers still love to thumb through catalogs. And I totally get that. I like to thumb through catalogs. It's a different experience than shopping online for sure. And it's a lot of times a better experience uh, in the catalog. So I'm I'm kind of pro catalog, but at the same time, I'm saying the time has come. And people will say, well, what are we gonna do without catalogs? Well, what are we gonna do without phone books? What are we gonna do without, <laughs> without newspapers? Yeah, It's just time, it's time to stop stop using all that paper. It's, it's just, and, and by the way, not one person in our industry under 35 years old uses catalogs anyway. So the future yeah. is now. Today is the day. Uh, join me in the crusade to eliminate printed catalogs as uh, from today on. So uh, that's my soapbox moment. Do I have any uh, any disagreers? Oh, so t- this is the line right here. You're drawing the line today. And- today at uh, one one twenty eight. Okay. This is all right. A, all right. Very good. All yeah. right. Well. I, I I like it. I agree. We. Um, Actually, uh, in 2021 was the first year that we didn't print a full catalog, and our catalog is quite big. Um, We did a small highlights catalog with new products and top sellers um, just to kind of transition that way and transition people out of the getting the catalog. So I agree. You know, I I can tell you just from my own personal (laughs) experience in managing warehouse space, and seeing skids and pallets full of catalogs um, yeah. year after year, we ordered less and less over the course of the past six to eight years. We ordered less every year and we're left with more at the end of the year. And that was the trend and it continues. I'm sure it continues to this day. Um, and I would imagine that being home and working for the past 20 months for most, most of the workforce out there, they're not bringing catalogs into their house. I can promise you that. So they're getting mm-hmm. used to working digitally. So today's the day. We're marking the time. We're, we're all together on this? We're all together. All together. Oh it's a kumbaya yeah. moment on the sofa. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Holly, let's hear yours. Okay, mine is completely 
out of the box. Um, mine is, um, I can't stand surprises and Boom. I don't like them. Um, not that, well, that kind of surprise, I don't like that either. But um, like, I'm the type of person that um, if my husband, a couple days before my birthday says, oh, I can't wait for your birthday. I can't wait to show you, you know, what you got. I'm like, oh, give it to me right now. And he's like, well, what do you mean? It's not your birthday. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't like surprises. I, once you tell me, I need to know right now. I was the kid that, <clears throat> you know, starting December 1st or whenever I was running through the house, digging through closets, <laughs> looking under beds. I did not care if on Christmas morning, there was not one gift that I was surprised about. I wanted to know all of the things ahead of time. So mm -hmm. I don't like surprises. Um, my husband, of course, is fine with surprises. And so I'll tell him, I'll do the same thing to him. And I'll be you know, a couple days before his birthday, I'll be like, Hey, I can't wait for your birthday. I'm so excited to, you know, give you your gift. And he's like, Oh, cool. And I'm like, well, you don't want it right now. And he's like, why would I want it right now? It's not my birthday. I'm like, because I want to give it to you right now. Cause I can't wait. Oh, so um, yeah, you're, you're the one, right. You can't wait. Now how, I thought you were going to go the direction of like a surprise party or something where you're, yeah. you're mm -hmm. in the spotlight. You didn't expect it. That kind of a thing that, that doesn't bother you as much. It, it does, but not as much. So maybe it's not surprises. I can't wait for things. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't like to wait for things. And I think that's why I, am completely obsessed and so grateful for um being able to binge watch tv <laughs> binge watch shows you know because i i can't wait um you know i mean how did, how did you ever do it when it was just network tv waiting i don't know thursday I, night for seinfeld or whatever I, I don't know i think i think i would actually get bored and then i would just stop watching and so now it's like when somebody tells me you know oh this is a great show you should watch it yeah. um i'm like oh okay and then if i turn on netflix or hulu or whatever and i see it has like three seasons i'm like overjoyed i'm like this is going to be the best binge ever yeah that's a great three days, right? Yeah. I mean, exactly. So I, yeah. so I live, I live with a Holly as well. She doesn't really <laughs> care for surprises much, but I was able to convince her uh, to uh, allow one of the life's greatest moments to be surprised. We did not know the the sex of our children, two of the three of our kids. We oh, didn't know what the sex gosh. was ahead of time. And I, she allowed me to do that for two of the three. And it was, and I, and I, my argument was there's no greater surprise that life offers you than this. Can't yeah. we just enjoy it? And I got her yeah. to buy in. Um, I gave in on our middle child for one reason or another, but two or three, <laughs> and it was it was worth it. I'm glad I sold it. It was fantastic. But everything else in life, she's the same exact way. If she knows I got something for her, she's snooping around trying to find it, doing the same <laughs> things you're talking about. It's miserable. Both our both our kids were a surprise to us. We have two children, and we we did not find out. I don't know how you guys do that. Oh, it was There's great. no way. There's no way. It. Mm -hmm. I loved it. Well, you just paint you paint the room a neutral color. That's, That's what we did. We went with we, green, and there yeah. you go. So. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's move on to our, uh, the last segment here. This is our yes no question. A total surprise to you, Holly. So, are you ready? I, 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 I don't know. Well, I don't think we could have prepared you enough for this particular moment. <laughs> All right. So, I heard from a little birdie that uh, you like to travel. Mm -hmm. uh, so I and and being picnic time and getting out, I figured we should probably focus on something, you know, adventure related uh, and this necessarily not necessarily adventure related, but it's related to it. So here's the question to you. And I've done some research on this, so I'm going to I'm going to impart mm. some knowledge as well. So okay. I'm going to start with this. Should mandatory paid vacation time become a law in the U.S.? Um, yes. Okay, it's not. In case you didn't know that, it's not a law. Yeah, I had to think about that. Yeah. Man what What does that mean, mandatory? So uh, here's here's the knowledge drop. Is okay. everybody ready for this? Okay. Yeah. Seven countries in the entire world do not mandate vacation time. There's no law that basically requires employers to give vacation time to their employees. Mm -hmm. Seven countries. That's which, it. That's which it. are those seven? Um, U.S. And then six others. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> actually in looking at the list, it was mostly little <laughs> island nations that uh, that did not require this as a law. There's uh, others range, and this is my facts that I wanted to drop here, from five days at the low end to 31 days. And the 31 days is a country called Andorra. Anybody know Andorra? Sure, of course. Been there many times. 
Seventy-seven thousand people in that country. So Andorra is is place. near is near Spain, I believe. It's it's on the border, literally a tiny mm. little speck between Spain and France. Yeah. Seventy-seven thousand people, but they offer thirty-one days. That's mandated by law. The uh, if you add in holidays, if you add in holidays, uh, the number one most days off uh, mandated by law is Iran. Fifty-three days off a year. What's the soapbox wow. policy on this, by the way, Brett? Do we uh, have zero. A it's zero, of course. I mean, we're, every in, the, day or we we're in the U.S. It's zero days off. So anyway, so it is it is not a law in the U.S. And some of us, maybe me, think that might be a little bit backwards. I mean, the European way is 30 days. And, yeah. you know, this they do it right. So, uh, this is starting to sound like your soapbox moment. A no, bit. no, it's a question. It's just a question. So Holly says yes. Any other yes. thoughts on that? Um. Well, yeah, I mean, I've always been jealous of Europeans that say, oh, we're on holiday and they're off for like six weeks. And six I'm like, weeks. How, yeah. how does that even happen? And I think now, especially since the pandemic and uh, people have learned to slow down and not want to be constantly doing the nine to five, I think it would be a really nice thing to mandate that uh, we take some, some and good I holiday agree. time. I agree with Holly. Yeah, Can that's you? great. We're going to write that into our employee uh, handbook and yes. uh, we'll go from there because I I'm not in a rush to move to Iran right now. I really like the Carolinas, <laughs> so I'm going to stick around here for a while. All right, Holly, <laughs> we appreciate you being here today. Thank you for being our guest. We love having you in Thank picnic you. time uh, as founding suppliers on the soapbox. You can meet with Holly and a couple of her colleagues. I know you mm -hmm. work it with a few of your folks. Mm -hmm. You want to give a shout out to them? Uh, we have Ashley and Celeste, um, and then we have our amazing order entry team with Kathy, Maritza, and Viviana. That's that's our that's our group right now. I never know who I'm going to get on Soapbox Day when I pop in to visit, but we love having you here. <laughs> thanks for supporting us. Thanks for being a founding supplier, and we appreciate your time today. Yeah, thank you guys.